She's like, what is this camera? What is this camera? What's up everyone? It is Jacob Robinson with Rulers of the Forest and I have here Farah. You can see she's so pretty. My hands down my favorite snake here. And she likes the camera too. <laughs> but she wants to wrap around the camera. That's what's going on. But anyway, I'm, today I'm gonna be showing you all of my dry march on snakes. This here is an Eastern Indigo. She just wants to cruise though. This is kind of the behavior of dry march on. They just love to go. She's just looking at that camera like, dude, can I, can you just let me get to that camera? Please, please let me. But she's a sweetie. I've had her since she was about six months old. She might be going through shed. I can kind of feel a little bit of that with her uh, scales. Oh. Come here, you. So they're very curious and inquisitive snakes. You can see she wants to see that camera. I want to see you. <laughs> but um, she's my largest one. Um, she's about four and a half years old. We tried pairing her uh, a little late in the season this year. So she got egg bound and so we're giving her a year off and then we'll try to pair her again with a, another. She had a, um, her mate was a very, very large male indigo. She was like, he was like twice her size and he is now owned by, I believe, the real Tarzan. I don't know if that's spoiling or still in his thunder, but um, Mike Roscoe sold him to um, real Tarzan. So I'm really sad because I wanted to bring him back for another season, but maybe maybe we'll work something out with real Tarzan. I don't know, but she is just so much fun to hold. She's just like, there's there's no uh, fear of bites with these guys. Oh, she's got me handcuffed. <laughs> she's got me cuffed. She's like, yeah, I can just cuff you. So, you, you know, there's no reason to bite you when I can just cuff you. But um, they're real, real docile snakes. Once you get them out of the feeding response, like they have a really heavy feeding response, which is good because you don't want to have a ball python situation where they're not um, eating what you feed them. And then you got, you know, some rodent if you're feeding frozen thought or live, um, you don't have something that's kind of left over. They pretty much will eat whatever is available to them. What I love about this genus is, man, they just are so like intelligent, I think. You know, a lot of people say they're just, they, they can sense their owners a little bit. There's like, a, not, not quite a bond because, you know, snakes aren't really gonna bond with their um, owners. It's, it's not really, it's more of like, they can kind of recognize you that you're the one that feeds them. They're also familiar with, I think, how you handle them. So um, I have noticed like some others have handled her and she just acts completely different. And so I think, you know, just like a child, she kind of gets away with a lot more with me. <laughs> this is a full grown female and she's not really gonna get much bigger than this. Honestly, she might get a little bit bigger. She's full grown. And until I saw the male, the really big male, I thought this was like a huge snake. And then I saw him and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a monster. So Eastern Indigos are, um, what is it? It's like, uh, I think in, not endangered, I think it's like one in between. I have to double check that. But basically what that means is you're not allowed to buy these cross state without a permit. So you have to go through the um, process of getting permits to get these cross state, but you can find them here and there. There's, I'm seeing a lot more, at least in the last three years, I'm seeing a lot more for sale. And so they're a lot easier than to find than they used to be. There's a big issue with um, too much inbreeding because they're so rare. And you know, a lot of people, since they can't sell them cross state, what happens is you, you end up breeding the same indigos um, to each other. And so it's good to, you know, try to get that permit and get them, you know, cross state if you can. Um, the problem was construction on these guys' is like area, but also just because they were, these were so highly sought after is you, people start, you know, poaching them and selling them and taking them out from the wild. So um, there's not that many of these compared to like a Texas indigo, a Mexican red tail indigo, black tail caribo. They're all within the same family, same with the yellow tail uh, caribo. And then there's a couple other uh, super rare um, dry march on like the falcon, the marguerite, um, which uh, no one's really Really seen because they, um, Venezuela is not exporting them. They don't allow you to get export. So yeah, she's got me handcuffed again. But um, I've got some other dry mark on here. They're a little easier to um, obtain. So like if you're trying to get a snake like this, like the Texas Indigo is pretty comparable to these. Um, all attitude, character and all that. Every snake pretty much has their own personality. So like, if you are thinking like one's gonna be more docile than the other, some are just kind of crazy. She's just watching the camera. She's like, what is that? She's studying now. Texas indigos are a little bit easier to find. Mexican uh, red tail is a little harder than um, Texas that I've seen. Um, black tail crevas you're gonna see a lot more of. And then the yellow tails are mostly wild cut. So you gotta be careful with the yellow tails um, because they can come with parasites and all kinds of issues. And a lot of the times when they're doing um, transporting them and exporting them, they don't always have um, uh, enough water. So they get dehydrated and then they die, you know, shortly after you get them. So you gotta be careful with that because they can have health issues over time. So love, love, love. This genus, I could talk about it forever. She's just, oh man, so pretty. So this is a red face, by the way. What it means is you can see a little bit of red on her chin here, kind of the red throat. You sometimes will call it here on red throat, 
red face. She's not too happy with me right now. She's like, what are you doing, dude? So let me go back in my hide. But um, there's also a totally black version. So like all fully black that you can get and they're just completely jet black. So they look like a large uh, Mexican black uh, king snake. Now, behavior wise, very different than a black Mexican black king snake. Um, the other thing that's really cool about these guys, is they'll eat anything. So they eat carry on, um, basically dead stuff. So, you know, if you had a rat in the middle of the road or any kind of a roadkill, they could eat it. Um, and they're also, they will um, eat rattlesnakes and other snakes in general as well as uh, lizards, tortoise. They're, I think they mostly go after tortoises inside the wild, um, but just a majestic animal. And they do actually, so Dry March On stands for, uh, or means Rulers of the Forest, and hence the channel name, Rulers of the Forest. Really, really majestic animal. So I'm gonna show you the little, the little miniature boy version of her. So this is, again, this is fair. I'm gonna put her away real quick. All right, so right here, I've got my little boy. His name is Cassius, so cute. I handle him almost daily, not quite daily, because he's gotta have time to digest his food. But um, this is a little baby male. I got him from Robert Bruce, um, who is a pretty well-known breeder for indigos. And so I got him uh, earlier this year and he is my most docile and sweetest little guy. You can see he's just cruising. He recognizes me, I just reach right in. He knows he's gonna be handled. Um, so he's super friendly. And again, for a baby this small, like he's getting kind of big compared to when I first got him. For a baby this small and he's just so chill, look at that guy. He's so cute. I talk about him daily. And the nice thing about dry march, march on is that, you know, they just need, mostly need room temps. You gotta be careful with uh, overheating. So if they're in like a really hot room, it could actually kill them. You also need uh, to give them a lot of water because of how they um, handle, they process water a little differently. Like when they you know, go to the bathroom, they let out a lot of water. And so this is so, um, dry march on are notorious for, or infamous for smelly poop, smelly enclosures. So you gotta clean them often. Go in places, I know exactly where I'm going. No, you don't. He just wants down. But um, you can see he's also a red phase, getting a little humid in here. So he's kind of getting a little clammy here. But, um, you know, they're just kind of, they just kind of like to go and go and go. They're not like ball python or like boas where they're just going to kind of hang out around your neck and just kind of chill with you. Just like king snakes. Hello. Hello. So he is so freaking cute. Look at that face. Yeah, he's, you can see in the blue, you can see the blue eyes a little bit. He's, he's going in shed. So I'm going to let him go back because I don't like to stress out animals and shed. This is Cassius. You'll see more of him. Don't worry. You'll see more of him. You'll, you'll probably see too much of him at some point. All right. So here I have a Texas Indigo. Her name is Mustang and she is in shed as well. I don't know what it is, but so I'm not going to handle her for very long, but I'll just tell you a little bit about her. So she, I got her from, I believe Paul off of Fauna Classifieds. Like I think she might be like a year, a year and a half. Man, it's, it's gotta be two years plus. Yeah. I've had her for a while. So she's kind of growing slowly, but they're, she's going to get big. And, um, but you can see it's a lot like Eastern Indigo. She's just like her, man, she's such a sweetheart though. Um, so I, I could just literally open, you know, lift her hide and pick her up and she doesn't like jam around. She doesn't try to escape me. She's real chill. Um, granted I have handled her a lot. So, you know, if you handle um, these guys a lot, they just get so, so docile. You see how chill she is. She's moving pretty slowly. And this is not because she's in shed. She's just like this all the time. So chill. Unlike my boy, who I'm gonna show you in a little bit, I've got a male um, Texas. He's pretty young. He's way younger than her. He's catching up in size a little bit. He's not quite as big as her. You'll notice that they have a lot more like, it's kind of like a lighter um, chin. So try to get a good shot of her. So you can see the lighter chin, kind of like a brownish, like a tan kind of, uh, and she's got a lot more modeling. So you can see like the, the side of her scales look a lot more modeled. So it's not like a jet black, like you see with like the Eastern Indigo. Really, really awesome snake. So if you're just thinking like, man, you know, I don't really, I want an Eastern Indigo. I don't really want that Texas Indigo. I mean, why? Like other than unless you really want, you know, because the notoriety of an Eastern and you want jet black, or if you want like a red phase or something, then that makes sense if that, but, if you just want the the beauty of an amazing snake, um, personality wise, even these, she's just gorgeous. So I can't say enough good things about Texas Indigos. They're just awesome. I have two of them. Crazy, crazy cool. She's just checking out the camera. But yeah, she's she's going in shed as well. So I'm gonna put her back and let her be because it's kind of stressful taking handling snakes while they're in shed. All right, so this squiggly guy is Darrow, the other Texas Indigo. And you can see he doesn't, I just don't handle him enough. He is just going and going and going, dude. A lot of them are like this when you haven't handled them much and they do mellow out. So you just have to fish them through like this. You can't hold on, so you don't want to like 
have a firm grip or they will stress out and potentially bite you in a defensive manner. What you want to do is just do this for a while and let them wear out and then they will chill out. So you can see he's already slowing down, realizing I'm not a threat. He's slowing down quite a bit. Hi, buddy. So his name is Darrow. He's now he's going for the camera. He's like, something to go on to. He's so freaking cute though. He's got a much brighter face. Um, I did get this one from um, Black Pearl Reptiles. So they are, um, that's John Michaels. This, that, that's pretty much the like number one, I think, I don't don't get mad at me any other breeders. He's like my favorite um, breeder of Dry Marcon because he had he's got so much experience working with these guys. He's got a ton of them. I learned most of the stuff that I know through John, um, at least from his videos and uh, talking with him and asking him questions. So this guy is just gorgeous. And John also uh, works with multiple lines of these. And so I had actually been on his waiting list. He's got a massive waiting list. So you know if you're looking for Dry Marcon or March on, um, you might be and for a long delay but um i got i was on a list for black tail and then i got a black tail crebo and then i told him you know i i have one like i was looking for a female and so he offered me a texas indigo i was like hey i got a female and he's like i've got a male and so that's where i got this guy i just haven't been handling him enough he's so cute though look at that face He's so cute. Look at that. Got like a, like this face kind of looks like a black tail Kribo a little bit. You're, I'm going to show you my black tail in a little bit, but he's got that lighter head and those awesome, awesome eyes. Look at those eyes, dude. You now he's just like, what's going on? They like to observe. They're more um, flight based, but they will study things before they take action usually, or they'll just run away. I mean, he's doing great now. You can tell he's a little tired. He's like, I am exhausted. Got no more run in me. But I'm going to put him back because he's finally chilled out. Um, I like to give them good experiences before I put them back. So meaning if they run and run and run a lot, I like to make sure they're calm before I put them back. I don't like want to put him back while he's scared because then that's the last thing he remembers is being scared instead of, you know, handled um, with care. So we're going to put him back now. But he is so cool. Do you plan on eventually breeding him to her? But you can see his size. Look at the length. He's pretty much the same length as her, but his head is smaller. So he's going to get big. And Texas, Texas Indigos get big. Very, very big. He's just chilling now. I exhausted him. He's worn out. All right, so I'm just going to give him just a moment to chill out because he is crazy. But this is my black tail Kribo, and his name is Aries. Oh, yeah, he's, he's doing a little bit already. So this is Aries. Um, he is... A Kribo. So, you know, you're probably wondering, well, what about Indigo? Is it an Ingo? Indigo? And they're pretty much the same thing. Um, I don't really know what the origin of why they call them Kribos, but um, Kribos do come from primarily um, South America. And he's going, where are you going, buddy? There we go. And um, now he's like curious. He's like, what is this? They all love the camera, man. They love it. So um, you can see he's got a black tail, just gorgeous. So he's like really light up front up top and then the back is black that's why they call them black tails and then there's such thing as i don't have them but there's such thing as a yellow tail kribo and they are opposite colors basically the same except they're a lot more yellow in the back so bright bright this is like gold right he's like kind of a like a copper no more like gold and the um yellow tails are like a neon yellow in their tail and then they're kind of like a more of a grayish kind of like kind of like him but more gray and then a black kind of black up front and um, what i love about these guys is the this face look at this face and they also make this like you'll hear this huffing sound and that's just their their way of just telling you they're there and be cautious we're here you know they don't he doesn't want any he doesn't really want to be bothered most snakes just don't want to be handled so even if they're docile they'll still do it like my most docile um crew will still do it but he's like one of my most stressed um snakes like he gets really stressed out he's doing really good right now um but typically he'll just squeeze and squeeze and constrict with his tail because he just doesn't want to get like i don't know he, he's just kind of weird about that when he sees the camera again he's like what is that i think he smells a little bit of the other snakes too so you want to wash your hands pretty well when be you know because they do they do eat other snakes he's part curious part like i just want to get out of here he's never struck at me he's struck at the glass like at a, as a feeding response um he's got a very good feeding response but um yeah i'm still working with this guy he still needs a lot more handling that face is so crazy all right, dude, time to put you away. So that's all of them. I'm gonna be showing you a surprise pretty soon here from Black Pearl Reptiles. I did buy a couple of snakes I didn't show you today. Also, I totally forgot to show you something. This is my other indigo that I didn't, you know, I mean, it's it can't really move, but I actually have an adult male. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, it is a red phase indigo here, you can see. And that's how much I love these snakes. So thanks so much for hanging out with me. If you wanna see more of these guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. See you all next time.